Thank you, Wayne. Such a privilege to be here at the NRA today. Thank you for fighting for our freedoms through the years. I just finished eight years as governor of Arkansas, and it was during that time that we created jobs, lowered taxes, we uh, improved education, we shrunk the size of government. But one of the things that is just as important as anything else is to support the Second Amendment and our freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. I have stood with the NRA through my time in public service, and it has been my honor to do that for over 20 years. As a member of Congress, I was on the Judiciary Committee, and I did battle with the Second Amendment with liberals such as Barney Frank, and uh, we fought the battle and we stood firm. When I was asked by President Bush to be a part of the Department of Homeland Security, the largest government reorganization in 50 years. I had responsibility for the border security. We didn't get it perfect, but let me tell you, it's a lot better than it was today and what Joe Biden has done. And whenever you look at the border security, whenever you look at the transportation networks, I was pleased to work with the NRA to make sure that our men and women who carried firearms can do it safely on an airplane. You can make sure you can go hunting. We made sure the rules accommodated our outdoorsmen. And then it was after the Newtown tragedy in which we lost young people in a school. I was asked by the NRA to lead the School Shield Initiative. And as Wayne mentioned, I put together an assembly of former Secret Service, law enforcement, educators. We looked at the schools. We looked at what we need to do to better protect our children. And we did a national study. We made recommendations. And you can still look at that. And those recommendations have made a difference in our society. And we've moved in that direction in which we understand fundamentally in a school if you're going to protect children, you need to have armed personnel to protect the children. And so in Arkansas, we, we not only put school resource officers that were trained in law enforcement techniques, but we also authorized school personnel to be trained and to be commissioned as a commission officer to carry a firearm in the school and protect the children. We understood that the best protection is an armed personnel in order to protect children from an armed intruder. And the time of response is critical. And that is why we wanted to make sure that the school had the personnel there that was trained and ready to respond in the quickest fashion. And so we did that, an example in Arkansas, now we have over 80 schools in which we have over 500 commissioned personnel of the school that's been trained to carry a firearm and to use it and to execute it if necessary to protect the children. That is being duplicated across the country, and we might need to make sure that we continue to support that effort. And so I've supported the Second Amendment in a lot of different capacities, and most recently as governor of Arkansas. And not only was it my joy to support the Second Amendment, but also those firearms manufacturing companies need a home. And I said, you can come to Arkansas and you can have a home where we welcome you. And I was delighted to recruit Sig Sauer to come to Arkansas and to build an ammunition plant. And now I am here before you as a candidate for President of the United States. And I guarantee you that I will continue to stand with the NRA, I will continue to stand for the Second Amendment and the fight that we have in front of us. But you know, we have some challenges that we face in America. There's the threat of violence in our cities, where urban mayors and chiefs of police are not 
doing their duty. My answer to the challenge of violence in our society are three simple words, and that is enforce the law. After the tragic murder of George Floyd, there were protests across America, many of those termed violent. Little Rock was no exception. And I witnessed the violence when I said our local law enforcement is not getting the job done. There were threats to people, they were burning buildings, and I said enough is enough. And I called the state police out, I called the National Guard out, and I said, we're going to enforce the law. That night, we arrested 70 violent criminals. And guess what happened? The violence stopped. You enforce the law. You enforce the law. I did that as United States Attorney, and we need to set that example across America. Today, we have a struggling economy in which you're hit with high interest rates and high inflation. And it all is the root cause and comes from excessive federal spending in Washington, D.C. We need to slow it down. We need to get a rein on it. We need to balance our budget. We need to get back to spending normalcy so you don't get hit with inflation and high interest rates. America needs to be strong. Right now, we are struggling in America because we are perceived as weak in, by our adversaries, which started in our disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, in which our enemies said, this is a good time to go into Ukraine by Russia. China has been more aggressive toward Taiwan. America needs to be strong. America needs to lead, and we should not retreat. It is important for America to lead and show strength and not weakness. And yes, we have a dysfunctional southern border, and we need to put no, more border resources there. We need to make sure that we support the Border Patrol that's doing the job, and we need to go after the cartels in Mexico that are controlling the border and sending fentanyl into the United States of America that is killing 100,000 of our young people every year. These are truly foreign terrorist organizations and should be designated as such. We need to have a pro-growth energy policy here in the United States. We shouldn't have our leaders going uh, to Venezuela and Saudi Arabia and saying, can you please produce more oil? Let's produce energy in the United States of America so we can be independent and dominant. And then we need to stop the leftist social agenda that's coming out of Washington that's impacting our schools, our communities, and our businesses. We need to say enough is enough. And so these are challenges that we face. But I want to come back to something that Vice President Pence remarked about, and that is the tragedies that we have seen most recently in some of our schools and businesses. And our hearts go out to them. But I challenge the NRA, I challenge you to continue to support the National School Shield Initiative that enhances security in our schools and the safety of our children. Let's continue to address our nation's mental health issues and the critical nature that uh, the deficient mental health services has led, left our country with. We need to enhance those services. We need to address the mental acuity challenges that are faced in our society. We have done that in Arkansas by enhancing the crisis stabilization units so that if someone has a mental health crisis and they come in contact with law enforcement, they can be given the help that they need versus filling up our jails. 
These are things that are practical and common sense. We need to enhance what we've done in Arkansas, the role of counselors in the schools to help those children that are struggling. And we need to be able to identify the problems and make sure that we issue our firearms under the Second Amendment to law-abiding citizens, but we need to enforce the law to keep them out of the hands of those that are prohibited by law from having those. That is simple common sense to keep us more safe. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a son of the heartland. I am proud to be from Arkansas. I'm proud to grow up on a farm. I am proud to understand hard work and initiative and responsibility. And I'm proud to stand with you to protect our freedoms, to protect our Second Amendment. And when we look at the future, we need a president in the White House that understands the importance of the Second Amendment and the ability of citizens to protect themselves and to exercise their constitutional rights. We do not have that right now. And we have to win in 2024 to make sure that we can have those protections. And I challenge you today that we need to beat Joe Biden in 2024. And he's praying right now, yes, He's hoping right now that he gets to have a repeat of 2020. And let me tell you, we don't need a rerun of 2020. Let's bring new leadership. Let's win in 2024 to protect our liberties, to protect our border, to protect the sovereignty of the United States, and that America can once again lead. God bless America. Thank you. God bless you.